Today our talk is going to be about uh, gallstones and uh, uh, the well-known uh, biliary uh, colic. I always uh, reiterate what I understand and say, keep it as simple as possible, but not simpler. The first thing that we need to understand is the bile production. About 100 mil, 800 mils of bile are produced by the liver uh, de uh, on daily uh, basis in adult human. That bile gets stored in the gallbladder. As we know, the sphincter of body has got a resting pressure and that pressure will control the flow of the uh, bile. So the gallbladder will be the reservoir that will uh, keep the bile until the next meal. Now we know once a fatty meal hits the uh, duodenum, the uh, duodenal mucosa has got an endocrine cells that will secrete the cholecystokinine that will tell the gallbladder to contract. The hormone get absorbed via the circulation and goes through, uh, systemic and tells the gallbladder to contract. Contraction of the gallbladder will lead to emptying of the bowel into the intestine to help with the process of digestion. That's mainly made by uh, bile salts, which were, are able to emulsify fat and make it in the form of absorbable hydrophilic missiles that can be absorbed easily. It does also help the pancreatic enzymes to digest protein further down the gastrointestinal tract. You will need to know the composition of the uh, bile. Uh, we know that water and electrolytes are the most uh, uh, abundant component of it, and uh, the electrolytes are the usual, sodium, potassium. We also have got some calcium and bicarb. The solutes are cholesterol and bile salts and bilirubin, lecithin, and there are miscellaneous materials. Obviously, all these are produced as part of the excretory and detoxifying function of the liver. We need to know something about, about the uh, bile salts because the bile salts are the material that will help us to uh, digest fatty food. There are primary, that are the uh, colic, lithocolic, and cardiacolic acids, and there are also the secondary bile salts. doesn't matter so, so much apart from the fact that they are uh, toxic uh, uh, substances, and for that reason, the body keeps them into a, a, a closed circuit of circulation inside the body, and the, uh, that's called the enterohepatic circulation. The bile gets created by the liver, down the bile duct, into the small intestine, up to the uh, distal part of the small intestine, uh, and to the, uh, then the small part will, will go to the colon. Very small part though. Almost all of the uh, bile acids will get absorbed in the uh, terminal ileum via the circulation through the portal vein back to the liver and repeat the cycle again. If they escape into the system as we uh, get in people who develop ob obstructive jaundice, they cause itching and they, uh, they change the taste and they make the patient feel unwell. How do stones form? I want you all to be um, uh, familiar with this uh, a triangular type of uh, diagram. And on here we have the molecular fraction of the cholesterol. And here we have the molecular fraction of the lecithin. And here we have the molecular fraction of the uh, bile uh, salt in percentage of uh, how much it is in uh, the uh, bile itself. Now. Cholesterol will keep, uh, uh, sorry, bile salts will keep cholesterol in missiles and so in a soluble uh, form so it does not uh, precipitate. But uh, it has a certain capacity uh, to deal with, and if the concentration of cholesterol in the, bile, uh, in the bile is uh, more than uh, what the bile salts can deal with, then this will lead to 
crystallization of the uh, cholesterol and then it will lead to formation of stones. The process of stone formation is a lengthy process. It's a matter of years and uh, even decades to, uh, for some of them to fully develop and cause uh, symptoms. The risk factors for gallstones uh, we know all the uh, 4F, the female fat, fertile 40s, but there are also other factors that will play uh, an important role in it, and that will be genetics, uh, age, as we get older, we're more uh, prone to develop gallstones, hemolytic disease, and these are uh, uh, disease that uh, lead to hemolysis caused by a congenital defect uh, in the uh, red cells. Uh, the most common of uh, these hemolytic anemias uh, are in the Caucasian people. We have hereditary spherocytosis. In African people, we have sickle cell anemia. And in people with the Mediterranean, uh, of Mediterranean descent, we have the thalassemia. We also have miscellaneous reasons why, uh, uh, why gallstones get uh, uh, formed. And uh, uh, that will include Crohn's disease and liver cirrhosis. Uh, in Crohn's disease, because most of the time it does affect the uh, terminal part of the ileum, the absorption of the bile salts will get affected and the liver can produce only so much of the bile salts. So you will get a relative deficiency of bile salts, uh, which even in the presence of normal cholesterol in the uh, bile, this will lead to formation of cholesterol uh, stones. Um, cirrhosis, in cirrhosis, the process is very complex and poorly understood, and uh, uh, it's uh, mainly due to the uh, defective excretory process of the uh, liver, in addition to the synthetic de uh, problem that happened with liver cirrhosis. Now we go to types of, of, of gallstones. We need to know that the majority are the uh, cholesterol stones. We go to the pigment zone and we go to the mixed. Uh, there is a debate between which one is most common, is it the cholesterol or the mixed? Typically, we say the cholesterol is the most common, followed by the uh, pigment stone, and the mixed are uh, less uh, prevalent. It's worthwhile mentioning what pigment stone is. Pigment stone is from the pigment that actually make the uh, color of the uh, bile, which is the bilirubin and its metabolites. Uh, and the uh, pigment stone is basically uh, precipitated bilirubin in patients who have hemolytic anemias, as I mentioned per, uh, before. Shape and size of gallstones do not uh, matter. Patients all the time ask me how many stones there were in my uh, gallbladder. My classical answer is I don't open the gallbladder and I don't count the uh, stones regardless of uh, how big they are, how small, how many, they do cause the same problem. I want to draw your attention to a term which is called sludge. A sludge is a mixture of cholesterol, a bit of uh, bilirubin, and also mucin that gets secreted from the uh, gallbladder. And this uh, uh, mixture, uh, if you look at it uh, with your naked eye, it's just a slimy looking material. I just want to confirm that this finding is not significant and it is only a sign of fasting. So when it gets reported on the ultrasound, you just need to ignore it for clinical purposes. Now the mechanism. How do these gallstones lead to uh, problems and complications? Very often what happens is that you get a stone lodged either in the cystic duct or in the neck, the region that we call the Hartman pouch. And as a result of the, uh, the, the uh, stone being impacted in here, then the gallbladder will contract trying to empty itself. Uh, against resistance and that would generate what we call the biliary colic which is the pain that starts in the epigastric region or the right upper quadrant and radiate to the right uh, middle part of the uh, back. Typically the pain will stay there for two to uh, for half an hour to a few hours. If this obstruction is not relieved then the uh, problem will 
get converted from a, just a biliary colic into a, an acute cholecystitis. And the thickness of the wall is the hallmark of acute cholecystitis. What happens if it uh, settles? The stone could either come this way, and that causes relief of the pain, and the patient uh, will uh, likely to have another episode in due time. If the stone falls this way, it either leads to obstructive jaundice, with or without cholangitis, or it passes through the bile duct, through the sphincter of uh, OD and uh, uh, the end lead to um, acute pancreatitis. Complications that can arise from uh, gallstones um, are uh, variable. I have listed them up in here, biliary colic, just fine, acute cholecystitis, as I explained. Obstructive jaundice, stone in the bile duct. Acute pancreatitis, stone passes through the uh, sphincter of OD. Cholangitis, a stone blocking the bile duct with super added infection. And rare other complication that can arise in this situation gallstoneitis, a uh, nice term for a fistula that happened between the neck of the gallbladder and the duodenum and a big stone like two centimeter stone passes into the duodenum and then get impacted into the terminal ileum typically occur in elderly female patients. Merizzi syndrome. Merizzi syndrome happen when the fistula or the obstruction that the neck of the gallbladder produce as a result of impacted larger stone is that it pushes on the bile duct and it even infiltrate the bile duct with an inflammatory process and can even fistulate through it. It's a complex one and do not get too concerned about it at your stage. Gallbladder cancer. We know that almost 95% of people who get gallbladder cancer, they do have gallstones. Gallbladder cancer is very rare in the absence of gallstones. I also want you to draw your attention to the thickness of the wall of the gallbladder. Which the thickening of the wall of the gallbladder is the hallmark of acute cholecystitis. Normally, it's only three millimeters, which is a paper thick. The main investigation that we use for uh, for stones is the ultrasound. It's very uh, sensitive to detecting gallstones, and when you read the report or you ask the radiographer to uh, give you a, a report over uh, the phone what you want to know from the ultrasound of the biliary is the following presence or absence of stones in the gallbladder stones that's the uh, shadow behind them thickness of the wall of the gallbladder measured by ultrasound four millimeters or more mean acute cholestats Pericholcystic fluid, there will be some fluid around the gallbladder in the, uh, the fossa or the plate that attaches the gallbladder to the liver. You want to know the uh, bile duct diameter? Normally it's 3 to 7 millimeter. It goes up with age. Are there any stones in the bile duct? But ultrasound is not very sensitive. It only detects stones that are a centimeter or bigger and that's only about less than 40% of stones uh, in the bile duct. You want to know that there is intrahepatic duct dilatation or not. It's very important because this is almost always pathological if you see a dilated intrahepatic bile duct, mean distal obstruction. And other findings such as the uh, findings in, related to the liver or uh, masses elsewhere in the abdomen. Thanks.